It is I, Ryan R. Williams, your acting coach and founder of Screen Actors System, and we're going to dive right into the six signs that your acting class is destroying your film career. Oh, man. As a working film and television director, I have to clean up the messes that outdated actor training creates on set. Here are some classroom practices that I firmly believe are harmful to the film actor. If you see any of this going on in your current acting class, I want you to run. Number one, there's no discussion of eye lines. Film editing is a dance of the eyes. The performer's eyes guide us through the world of a film. They are the communicators. If you're not allowed to hide in your class, that's a good thing. If you are allowed to hide your eyes in your class, it is time to bail. Don't waste your time. If you've never heard the instructor utter the phrase points of focus, beware. Number two, cold reading happens every week. Cold read classes offer fast food answers for actors who don't want to rehearse, plain and simple. How often do you arrive unprepared to a real audition? Almost never. Proper text analysis and rehearsal technique are both essential for serious film actors. Outside of the odd audition where they're going to give you a last minute, oh, you should read for this part instead of that part. How often do you really cold read compared to how often do people train to cold read? It's, it's just a ridiculous thing to train for, considering how often it comes up professionally. And the lazy actor might argue, well, Ryan, sometimes you don't have time to rehearse on set. And I would counter, well, hypothetical naysayer, paid actors sure don't have scripts in their hands either. An actor should build a strong foundation of fully realized performances in weekly classes. That body of work is what you will draw from on a chaotic set. Practice and train at the level you would actually like to work in films. And I would not spend 15 minutes in a parking lot learning my script for a Steven Spielberg film. And I would not attempt it in a scene study class for the same reasons. Because someday you want to be in a Steven Spielberg film. Number three, a camera is being used but not from a cinematic angle. Plunking down a camcorder mounted to a junky tripod, one that's operated by the underqualified TA who's sitting on the front row, tells you nothing about how your work could truly look in a feature film or TV show. That perspective can only be gained by using prime lenses with shallow depth of field on a location shoot with production audio where marks are hit, boom mics are used. Granted, most on-camera classes don't shoot footage at that level like like I do in my class. I have a unique situation because I'm a director, so I have a lot of gear, and I'm also a cinematographer, so I know how to do that. And, you know, that's why we give our actors that are in class, you know, free reel because it's an exercise at the end of the day for us to go out and shoot reel. And it's good for me to make it look just like it's in a TV show I'm directing. And the actors can use it to book parts. But the main thing is they get to watch those dailies just like someone who's already on a TV show would and really calibrate and recalibrate their performances until it looks like the style of acting you see in modern movies and TV shows. And that's that's really essential. Watching playback of amateur footage that is shot from the front row of an acting class is, is self-abuse and it should be avoided. Number four, playing to the room is encouraged. The audience in a true film acting class must lean forward to hear and be regarded as the crew. Classes where performers are encouraged to speak up or entertain fellow students should be avoided at all costs. Projection is for legitimate theater, not film. You want to perform in a room full of actors who appreciate nuance. It must be a respectful, quiet place where everyone locks it up. Quiet, please. Pictures up. Do it just like you would on a set. Uh, You should not have to shout your scene over the din of a rowdy class like a commodities broker hoping to unload soybean stock before the bell rings at the end of a day of trading. Watch out if you hear the teacher say, they can't hear you in the back. Better than the boom operator never be able to hear again when you start belting it out like Ethel Merman. Number five, unmotivated blocking is encouraged. Moving your feet means moving the camera. While scenes are not static in movies, the only move when they have to. In order to tell the story, it takes too long to arrange lights and rig cameras to block arbitrarily. In acting classes, the blocking often sends the actor from one side of a 25-foot stage to the other and back again. And unless the movie is about being chased by a swarm of bees they are going to CGI in later, it will not be done this way. Please stop running around and resist instruction to do so. You don't have to 
work in the way your acting teacher is telling you to work necessarily. You can make some of these calibrations on your own to get the most out of acting classes because frankly, most acting training is so out of date, guys. It's not going to prepare you for film. The playing field in film is limited by light, art direction, and presence of gear. Get used to being crammed in and unable to move much. You wouldn't want to reveal a grip eating red vines when the camera pans beyond the allotted frame because you're covering too much ground. And you get used to that in a big class where they let you move around too much. Don't do it to yourselves, guys. Number six, the last one, precision is not the norm. Film takes must be repeatable. Notes from the teacher who likes to change everything in the moment do not develop your muscle memory correctly. You need to be able to create within the confines of very precise, repeatable staging. A distinction must be made between improv and scene study. Watch out if you hear the teacher say the lines don't matter. Just go with it. Follow your impulses. The lines might matter to Aaron Zorkin and the camera operator, DP, focus puller, and Dolly Crip may be even less inclined to follow your random impulses. Inspiration and impulse are two very different things. Impulse is the reason you buy beef jerky in line at Target. Inspiration requires homework. Now, if you're realizing that your current acting class is not fit for the film actor take heart some actors don't even have a class to contemplate not being in a class at all is the worst mistake you can make but attending the wrong class can knock you out of the film game before it even starts it doesn't take much for those bad habits to take hold and they can really really hold you back down the stretch if this video has been valuable to you go ahead and click the link below and visit ryanrwilliams.com to get more free tips audition hacks and acting tricks that will help make it happen for you now and if you'd like to take classes with me on a weekly basis and you see the enroll now button on the website go ahead and click that and claim your seat if you don't see the enroll now button just check back and uh, when we have availability it will be there for you just like we'll be there for you at screen actor system guys break a leg out there there's nothing more fun than playing make believe for a living and i'm glad we can all be a part of it again i am ryan r williams don't wait for someday guys do it now you need a good on-camera class. You need real footage. So hard to come by. LA's number one on-camera acting coach, Ryan R. Williams, is here to help as many of you as he can, and it's simple. Join his on-camera acting class, voted number one by Backstage Magazine readers, and every month he shoots footage for your reel. Like that sweet footage you're watching now. And yes, I am Ryan R. Williams.